Alright, how's it going party people? Welcome back to New China. I changed the name because like basically we made China. This is my linear city. Got a whole bunch of interesting industry stuff going on now. Plopped in a giant building here to house all the people I need to work for me like China typically does. Except this one is all uh, its occupied, unlike the Chinese buildings that they have over there. I don't know if the China, if China, if China actually took those buildings down or what they did with them, but that was a serious issue. You know, they built all, it was like a housing bubble or something that was going on over there. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, this city is super successful. I mean, doing a lot of stuff here. Um, this is going to be kind of a, a different type of episode. Um, I'm, s I'm uh, involved in a nonprofit called LRH, um, and it's uh, it's a spiritual um, community that is putting its focus towards the heart and uh, helping those who are in the process of awakening come to that and then also, uh, you know, just have a, a nice a nice place, a nice sanctuary for, uh, for community and for loving, kind, love, unconditional loving awareness for one another. And I think it's going to be, a, it's a very exciting thing and... Uh, and so I'm going to I'm going to treat everybody to just maybe like a third little over 30 minutes of a little talk I did addressing some of the questions for um, one of our one of our wonderful um, I don't know people who are involved in this wonderful organization I don't know we don't really have roles or anything but um, I am you know, I gave a little talk, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And um, I'll just be messing around with this city in the background until it finishes. So, without further ado, I hope you all have a great day. And here's my darshan. Namaste. Namaste. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Let's take a moment, wherever you are, however you're listening, to set the tone for our hearts to open. Sit or stand with your eyes open or closed, but focus right on the middle of your chest and take three deep breaths right from the heart. This way we can direct the focus of our attention into an essence 
that we call our living beingness. And we can see that through the breath. Pointing our attention towards this being, your being, our being. We let go of those things that are causing hurt and pain, stress. Basically, we're letting go of everything that we think about. And as we're pointing our attention towards this beingness, we can rest in that loving warmth. My beingness is unconditional love. There's not a thing you could do to make me not love you. You are absolutely perfect just the way you are. life, we tend to drift away from that beingness. We get on a little rowboat and go on the river of thoughts and start to get carried away on the wonderful ups and downs of that current. And it's in these sacred moments when we come together and we create that time and space to sink back into the water of our true beingness, which is unconditional love and acceptance. I'm so grateful for you and your time. And I'm doing this in an attempt to serve in any possible way that I could think of. My way to unconditional love was my way and your way will be your way but when we come together in this community that we're building we'll be able to support each other from the heart so that we can go back onto that rowboat and guide that boat instead of letting <clears throat> those currents guide us, the currents of thoughts and desires. have a couple questions here. First question is, who is Tony? 
Why is Tony special? Why do I want to listen and follow Tony? Why should I give Tony and his church my hard earned money? I love the way that that question is formed because who Tony is is an orientation in your mind for those that know me Tony is a son and a brother and a partner a boyfriend scholar, a worker, a salesperson, nice and calm. He's kind of lazy. He's kind of weird. He's misunderstood there are moments where who society tells you you are doesn't quite it doesn't quite buy it you don't quite buy that story i think the earliest memory of not being bought into that story i don't know how old i was but i was fairly young maybe seven or eight and i remember my dad who i had a great relationship with i looked up to him he was my hero and he said, son, one day you're going to grow up and you're going to hate me. You're going to think you're just you're not going to like me. You're going to think I'm a I'm not a good person or something along those lines that that there's going to be issues between me and dad. And I thought to myself, no, I won't. That's not who I am. Who I am is not someone who will be in conflict with you, who will shed my heart from you. And that's a... That's not something that typically happens at a younger age because when we grow up we start to become conditioned into a role that fits relationship dynamics i was learning how to be a son in my family of four and I was learning what it meant to be part of that family. And as I grew up and went to school, I was told I was a football player. You know, I'm an athlete. I'm overweight. I'm strong. I'm smart. I was growing into a curriculum of becoming somebody special. And that's the same curriculum that's taught throughout this culture we live in. How do we become somebody? 
Not just somebody, but also somebody special. How will you contribute? And as society, society will guide you on that and they will tell you who you are and where you fit in. I don't think there's any reason why you should want to listen or follow me. But if that want does arise, I welcome you to explore those types of desires, those types of curiosities. And I don't expect any money from you. What I want to do is to feed you and to give to you. That's why our donation bin is full with money and food and other things, whatever you want, it's already full. And this is a donation bin for you to take out of. If you feel inclined, give to the donation bowl. If you feel inclined, take from it. But as we continue on in this community, don't think that taking and taking without giving something back, I don't think that practice will be fruitful for you. Maybe for a little while, and then the fruit may be a lesson. And in that lesson, you'll realize that gratitude, thanks, and reciprocation, that is how the, that is the beauty. That's the beauty in participation. And we can all share that. How did Tony become enlightened? Tony went through a curriculum of becoming somebody. And through that journey, through that course of becoming somebody and somebody perhaps even special, I must become somebody special. I became absorbed into the identity of Tony. And that absorption created a singular one pointed perspective, an orientation. And that orientation was my reality my singular pointed perspective. That's all I knew of reality. That reality shattered the moment I thought I was dead. And reality opened up into an unrecognizable Thing, something that was there all along but I was completely unaware of it 
And as I came back into the one-pointed perspective of Tony, I realized that there was something else out there. And I went on a search for what that was. And through that search of seeking what is going on, I became primed. I listened to teachings, which I'm sure will be resonating with you from all over. Alan Watts, Eckhart Tolle, Terrence McKenna, all sorts of different people, different mouthpieces out there. And they were speaking back to me a truth which was reflected in a way that I recognized but didn't fully embody. And so it wasn't until I came across the idea that we are modeling our reality through concepts. What we think of reality is concepts. I was able to see the things I was rejecting, see where the love wasn't coming through. And I was able to see that as only a concept. My identity became a concept. And every thought, every intellectual thought, the rational brain, logic, everything looked more, it was more like a bubble instead of a beingness. Now everything was bubbles. And who I became was the area that surrounded every concept and pervaded every concept. I realized that me, who I thought I was, Tony, was a concept that these concepts can't exist without relationships. And I became the contrast to all concepts. I formed a relationship to everything in existence. And from my perspective, I was unconditional love. And everything else was only an idea that is a part, that's, that is inside of me. And these parts, these concepts that are inside of us, those that we do not love, point the way to the work the necessary work because that is the area that that we've latched on an identity to and that identity can it, it can it can bring suffering especially if there's anger or negativity, righteousness. And I looked back at who I thought I was. I looked back at Tony and I didn't feel sorry. I didn't feel shame or guilt. I just felt an enormous amount of compassion.
and this realization it will never go away I could never go back into that into that one point in this identity that belief It would just be being make believe. How can I become enlightened like Tony? Well, I would say you, you should find the easiest path for yourself. There are multiple different paths. My path was one of more eating my own rational mind. They call it Yan Yoga. It's taking an intellectual approach, turning the mind in on itself, seeing it as something that is contradictory. And that was my way of escape. It's not a common one. A lot of times people have moments, flashes of this experience, but to hold that, to hold it and to know it as your true essence and what is going on. I think that path for me, it worked because now my intellectual mind always knows that. It, there's a space that I can always go to, the understanding. The reason why we practice is to cultivate that space in the mind that is quiet. You pay attention to that quiet space. And the more that we can cultivate this space of loving awareness, the more we can bring it with us so that in the beginning, it may just be a passenger. And ultimately, we'll take who you are, who Tony is. Tony is now the passenger. You'll be able to see your identity as a passenger. And then from that space, we can be conscious of how we act in this world as to not bring about more suffering. And that's so important. Wouldn't that just be the best to have a world where people are consciously aware of the amount of suffering they're giving to people. So much of our suffering is spread unconsciously. And so we'll come together just to cultivate this warmth, this warm, loving, true beingness. High level message about your core philosophy. What's a high? I think we've pretty much covered it that by becoming aware and sinking into our loving awareness, we'll be able to lessen the amount of suffering that exists in our realities and in our world. There's also a question about a tire. The clothes that we put on our bodies are a representation of an identity, a separateness, or belongingness. 
it's to signal a message non-verbally. Now, colors, words, pictures, all of these are tools that we use to elicit a response inside. And I want everybody to be comfortable. I want everyone to be able to not just shed their clothes, but shed your skin and bones and flesh and your, your, the way, the, the, your, facial, your facial features. Shed, shed your physical being. Become absorbed into the world that you've modeled for yourself. Once you're in that space, once your heart is completely in tune and you, your, your reality is resting inside of your heart, you'll know what kind of message is appropriate. You'll know what you want to say. If you want some help, if, if you want some guidance, I'll help you by pointing towards your heart and I'll speak to you from my heart. What we wear on the outside, who, what we look like, these are not this is it, it can get in the way of coming into the union of your trueness and that's why when you have groups and you want to create a union that you all look the same when you join a cult, you shave your head, you're in the military, you shave your head, you wear a certain attire. And so all that's represented is what's on the inside. I don't have, I, I don't see the need to have a unified look. Because no matter what you're wearing, no matter what you look like, we can, if we, if we don't already see beneath the skin and bones and the clothes, then we'll use that as a practice and if we look upon somebody and we have an aversion or a blockage to see them as your own true essence and if we have a hard time accepting them we've just come across an opportunity to become more self-aware, more loving, more accepting, and to come back into our essence, into our truth. Let's sit for a moment. <clears throat> 